do it. It is indeed another edition of the Romania Show. Uh, if you were watching yesterday, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. I uh, forgot to hit the button to record it. And there's actually three buttons on my computer. Any which one of them will record the show, and yet I didn't hit either, none of them. So, we are here, we are recording today. Hopefully this will work. Um, I'm looking a little red because I got the lights on, but what can I do? Uh... There's only one subject on the show today, that is the Prime Minister of Romania uh, yesterday, Victor Ponta, he, last night, I guess, in Romania, although it was daytime in America. There's an academic journal called Nature, and they published an online article in which they uh, sustained that Victor Ponta, the current Prime Minister of Romania, captain of the Red Team, as I like to call him, uh, plagiarized over half of his doctoral dissertation. I believe it was 2003 when that was uh, accepted, and he now, of course, has a doctorate. Uh, the dissertation was about uh, international justice, particularly, uh, I guess, the tribunals they've been having in Europe, the international courts. And it was already a known fact that the professor who awarded him the dissertation in the first place was none other than Andrea Nastasti, who is the former prime minister of Romania, of the same job Ponta has now, and the former uh, president of the Red Team, uh, also the same job that uh, Ponta has now. And, of course, Nastasi is uh, up to his neck in... Court cases uh, proven that he's a corrupt bastard, and Ponta, when he became the prime minister, of course, uh, you know, I, brought, I talked about it before, he got uh, one of the major complaints withdrawn against him from the state, because now Ponta owns, controls the state, or the government. So, back to the dissertation. Now, nature, I, I'm realizing I've been watching uh, Romanian TV and reading Romanian newspapers and going on Romanian websites and there's a big misunderstanding about what nature is about. To begin with, some people are calling it natura, which means uh, the Romanian version, and it sounds a little bit like it's, uh, I don't know, the Discovery Channel or something and dealing with, you know, zebras running around. Nature is one of the oldest and most prestigious, <laughs> it doesn't almost get any more prestigious uh, of an academic journal than nature. Uh, they primarily cover research. They don't have a specific, uh, some journals of course are very focused on one particular topic of research or topic of knowledge. Uh, I can tell you that I've read Nature before. I know that Nature is uh, one of the, if not the number one most cited journal uh, in the history of academic research, which means that if you're writing a paper, a legitimate paper, not plagiarizing, uh, you say, oh, that's a uh, reference so-and-so, an article that was published in the journal Nature. Second thing is, yes, it was published online. Uh, this is 2012. Even academic journals uh, publish things online these days. And some Romanians think that, oh, all you gotta do is have an account, and you know anybody can publish an article. It's not the same. Well, it's not exactly the same, because, of course, uh, the print journal, I believe, comes out once a month. And therefore, obviously, you know, online is instantaneous. But you can't just uh, sign up and you know with your Gmail account and just you know you can't even comment on there unless you're already a paid uh, sub subscriber to, to Nature. That's just commenting, and you certainly can't publish uh, an article. They're like I said, they're very prestigious. Okay, they're, they have nothing to do with Romania. Uh, I believe they're actually a British journal, um, certainly in English. And uh, if they're not British, they're American. I, I completely slips my mind at the moment, but they're, you know, they cannot be possibly be more respected. And if you actually read the article, you can see that the guy did a whole bunch of research and he contacted several other people, including, you know, Romanians who are experts, including one guy who is actually on the council that uh, decides whether uh, degrees and, you know, uh, doctorates and all that stuff is, is even going to be approved. So, very relevant people, which is how this is called. Okay, let me explain something here. There's something called a peer review journal. 
and all the prestigious academic journals do this. This means that you cannot just, like imagine I'm a scientist and uh, we'll make it real simple, I'm a chemist. And I say, oh, I discovered a new formula. You mix this chemical and that chemical and you get this wonderful new product and isn't it fantastic? Well, I write down all my research. I write down exactly what happened and I send it to, say, journal, uh, Nature and they don't just publish it. They have what's called peer review, which means that they send my paper out to other scientists who are experts in that particular field and then they either you know copy the research or they try it themselves or they see if my methodology was correct and all this other stuff and then if they say that it's okay then it gets published now are there mistakes that are made of course but with this high high level of rigor you know nature doesn't just publish anything and they already did in the first article say look we talked to this guy we talked to this guy we talked to this guy and here's all the reasons why there's proof that Ponta plagiarized his article. So that happened uh, fairly early last night, um, middle of the day in America time, and uh, I read through it, and then I found a few examples on the internet, and you know those example examples are word for word copied from other people. Uh, the entire dissertation is supposedly 400 and some pages long. I have not been able to find the entire original uh, thing, uh, nor you know the text that it's supposed to be copied from, so I could compare them. But you know, unlike a corruption charge or an influence charge or bribery charge, you know, plagiarism is really easy to prove or disprove because all you got to do is take text number one, which in this case is Ponta's dissertation, text number two, which is supposedly the text that he copied from and just compare them. You don't need any witnesses, you don't need any high tech, you don't need any special equipment, and you, you know, frankly, you don't even need to speak Romanian. Uh, you know, if I show, show me some uh, dissertation in Czech language, I don't speak Czech Republic language, but you can, oh, hey, this word started, oh, 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 it's all the same. Well, the passages I saw, they're all the same, but they're just passages. Maybe it's part of a quote, or maybe it's part of a citation, or, you know, there's no way for me to know. So, oh, you know, I said, you know, Nature's a very, very prestigious journal, and they do their homework, and I'm thinking that they're probably right. But Ponto was actually in Austria yesterday um, doing God knows what. I've noticed on a side note that you know, he landed He landed at the airport last night in Bucharest. They call it Henry Quanda now. He's, it's Otto Pen. And he already uh, was taking advantage of this little plagiarism scandal because he held himself a little press conference. You know, you gotta love the ego on this guy, right? He lands, you know, in Bucharest, and instead of just, you know, driving down to his office or the, you know, the parliament building, which is where he works, no, he's gotta have a little press conference at the airport. And so, you know, he's a million miles away from him. He can't do it anywhere else. But anyway... He landed quite late at night, uh, I'm thinking around 11.30, almost midnight here in Romania time, and I was tired, I said, but you know what, I want to see what this guy's got to say, because you can always tell, because, uh, and this is where it gets interesting, because you got this accusation from a very reputable source, but there's not any way to look at the evidence, as of yet, I'm sure it'll come out. So it's a little bit like a police crime, and this is where, you know, my expertise, I guess, comes in, if you want to call it that. It is expertise. I don't know why I say, if you want to call it that, but it feels a little weird doing it, you know, through the television on Romanian TV. But nonetheless, the, the, the techniques are the same. And this is why I wanted to do the show on this, because he lands, he appears in front of the cameras, like I said, almost midnight. Uh, he gives a little speech about, oh, I was in Vienna, I met with Owen Bay and Rafaels and all this crap. And then, of course, right away, one of the journalists what about the accusations that you're a plagiarist? Now, in a police case, uh, if you watch a lot of TV, you get an incredibly misleading sense of how things work. Because in TV, like the, the, the crimes are always mysterious, and there are twists and turns, and you know, just when you think it's one guy, then it's that guy. You know, and then the cr criminals are always super smart, and they're you know using secret techniques to fool the police and all this other crap. That's not really what happens. What really happens is. And I, and I was thinking about a case today. Uh, a woman uh, came into our office. This is a true story. Uh, of course, I'm going to you know, keep it anonymous because you know, it's real. She came into our office. She said, listen, I was uh, driving down the street uh, and I was looking for a house or something. 
and no, no, no. Uh, she was jogging. Excuse me. She was jogging. You know, the sport where you run around in the, in the city, and um, this weird dude came up to her, and you know, he whipped out his uh, genitalia. Well, you know, he gave her a little bit of a scare. Well, she reported to the police. It wasn't like the crime of the century. It wasn't like there was any, you know, gunshots to collect or fingerprints or, you know, whatever that CSI crack, you know, ultraviolet lasers and all this other stuff. But she got a pretty good look at the guy. And so, of course, the police had a description. And, well, they picked up a guy. Maybe it's the guy, right? Oh, he's a guy who's about this tall. He looks about this old, wearing a white T-shirt and some jeans. Well, is it the guy or isn't it the guy? So, we're at the same situation where we got Ponce. We got an accusation. Um, she thinks it was the guy. She didn't, you know, stare at him for an hour. She's vaguely convinced. She's fairly convinced that it was him. But we don't have any hard proof. So, we sit down and, what do you do? This is where it gets, this is where real police work happens. You sit down and you talk to the guy. So, here's Ponta coming in off the airplane. It's first chance to, uh, you know, speak. And, of course, it's live, so... That was very interesting for me because it wasn't like a canned or edited segment here. I wanted to see his body language. I wanted to see his reaction. Mr. Ponta, what do you say about the accusations that you plagiarized your doctoral dissertation? And, frankly, although I really can't stand the guy, I kind of was hoping that it was all some kind of misunderstanding or mistake. Excuse me. Excuse the noise here in the background. The entire world is building houses this summer. So, right away, you could tell the guy was lying. You could tell he was lying. I could tell. I said, I was sitting here right here on my sofa, and I said, I turned to my cat and said, he's lying. Now, how do you know that? Well, number one, uh, I never wrote an academic uh, dissertation, but uh, if I ever did, and I really wrote it for real, and there's no plagiarism, um, and someone accuses me of plagiarizing or waggling my genitalia at a jogger or anything else that I have nothing to do with, What's the normal reaction? To imagine it was you, someone accusing you. The first thing you do is you go, totally, totally false. You completely, you would say, no, it's completely wrong, 100%. You deny it in very strong terms. That's what innocent people do. What did Ponta do? He goes, oh, this is Bosesco, the president. It's his work. He, he called his friends, and they're just printing lies about me. He never made it clear and bold declaration that it was a lie. He said, you'll see, I can't remember the exact words he said because Chris was in Romain, but he said something like, you'll see, it's that, you know, everything is uh, legitimate about my dissertation. That's kind of what he said. He never said, it's all 100% a lie and I'll do whatever it takes to prove it. Just like our Mr. You know, Flasher didn't say, oh, it's all 100% a lie, I'll do whatever it takes to prove it. I mean, if you ever want to get away with a crime, just prepare yourself ahead of time, and then if the police question you, just immediately act offended and say, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll take a fire detector test. I'll give you a blood sample. I'm completely innocent. Because that attitude is, quite frankly, the attitude that innocent people have, and guilty people never do. It's very hard to lie to yourself. And when you know you're guilty, you act a certain way. Second thing, Ponta, you know, last night, <laughs> He's joking around. It's a serious accusation here. The guy is not, um, you know, a high school professor in the countryside where it's not really that big of a deal if he is a plagiarist. This guy's supposed to be the prime minister, aka the head of the government. He complete, you know, he's just flew back from Austria. He was in Poland. Uh, you know, he's representing the country on an international level. And he's certainly acting like he's the king of the world. Uh, you know, other prime ministers and leaders, and including, you know, investors and bank people and uh, uh, IMF and the World Bank and all these other people are paying a lot of attention to them. So when someone attacks your credibility that seriously, because nature didn't say one or two pages were plagiarized. They said over half of the pages in this dissertation were plagiarized, so which means... It wasn't just, oh, a little quote, I forgot that. Oh, sorry about that, I forgot to cite that guy. No, over half. So, it's not a joking matter. He comes, mm -hmm. ho, 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 
That's another thing that he did. He said, what do, uh, I mean, if you have little children, you know about this, especially if you've got more than one, but you do something called deflecting the blame, which is, um, nature accused me of plagiarizing, but I'm now blaming nature because they once gave an interview to um, Fonario, who was the former education minister and a completely uh, a politician from the opposite party, and I guess you'd call him an enemy, a Ponte political enemy. So he's like, oh, they're, they're, they're dead with that guy. He's a no good snake, and you know they can't be trusted because they're hanging out with that guy. Well, to begin with, I don't know if they gave an interview with Fonario or whatever, but I don't care who called him, they don't work for that guy. See, he's passing the blame. He's saying, oh, you remember how Fonario, my enemy, political opponent is involved with these guys so therefore what nature says it's not true because they're associated with the guy that I don't like and a lot of Romanians don't like well you know Fonario could be a, a serial killer and kill 50 people but if he's telling the truth about a particular subject it's still the truth you know the truth doesn't change no matter who says it so there you go He's passing the blame, right? He's like, oh, there you go. They gave an interview to Fonadio, so, you know, who can trust what they're saying? Oh, that's interesting. Third thing, of course, um, all guilty criminals do, I'll just tell you, is, this is body language thing, you know, a lot of people, you know, read books or watch movies and stuff, and they say, oh, they, you know, they got a twitch in their eye and all this kind of stuff. And there's some subtle things, obviously. Um, that's something you need just a lot of experience and training to get away uh, to truly understand, but you don't even need all that stuff. Look at the face and look at the body language, and if it's pointed towards the exit, that means they're guilty because they're trying, subconsciously they're saying, I need to get out of here. Well, here comes Ponte, do, 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 he walks on the stage, and I was watching him, and he kept looking over to one particular side, and he was shifting over that way, and his you know, shoulders were twisting that way, and I said, oh my goodness, I bet you that's where the exit is. He answers two, three, four questions, whatever it was, exactly where I thought, right towards the exit. He came in from the other way, the uh, other door, actually behind him, and then he went out to the side, and that was the exit. So he's shifting towards the exit, which means subconsciously he knows he wants to get out of there. Now, if you're an innocent guy, you want to stay there because you're saying, look, I'm not leaving until I clear my name. You know, if someone accused me of stealing or murder or whatever else, dude, that wasn't me. You know, I'll do whatever it takes just to get this off my, you know, so I can clear my name. No, I didn't do that. So, third thing is, uh, or fourth thing, I guess, is called, we call it, I hate to be vulgar, we call it throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Which means you just start, like, throwing chaff out the back of the plane, you know, like, just anything to distract the people, like, oh, they're talking for an audio, damn, oh, uh, this is Bosescu's doing, which maybe it is, so what? Again, it doesn't matter if a serial killer and a murderer and a bank robber and a pedophile. Uh, we're the ones who made the accusation. If it's true, and this is a really factual thing, it's not a subjective thing, it's not like, oh, well, he stole my you know, pumpkin pie recipe. Well, you can't really tell the difference between two different pumpkin pies because they all have pumpkin in them. No, this is word for word, did you copy your thesis, yes or no? So if, you know, Hitler and uh, Charles Manson are the ones bringing the accusations, it doesn't matter because you can just look and see. So he's throwing that on the wall. Then of course he's making fun of nature. Oh, the nature magazine. Oh no, blah, 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 blah. Throwing things on the wall, right? Oh, Bosescu did it. Oh, one of Bosescu's people did it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you can, uh, but Ponta didn't say this, but his fans, you know, his little monkeys did it. They said, oh, anybody can write an article in nature. All you need is to count. Wrong. And then the other thing I heard, again from his monkeys, was, well, yeah, well, Bulk and Bosanku and this guy and that guy and that guy plagiarized their papers too. So what? That's a separate issue. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't know. I don't have the proof. But even if every single person in Romania plagiarized, it doesn't excuse what you did, sir. So. When you start throwing, you know, throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, that's another sign of desperation. And the last proof that I saw with my own eyes 
you can always tell because Lance, Lance goes in front of the stadium, or the podium, excuse me, blah, 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 I met with these people, first question about the plagiarism, he, you know, half denies it. Then he turns it around to like, oh, I'm still going to that European Council meeting, I don't care what people say. You know, it wasn't just Nature that published that article, as soon as that was published, a very influential German newspaper, I'm not going to pronounce it F-A-Z, uh, Frankfurter paper, uh, you know, which, by the way, Angela, Angela Merkel, you know, the biggest prime minister, she's called the chancellor, but, you know, she's prime minister, biggest prime minister in Europe, she reads German, so do a lot of other people, and they all read that article, either in English or in German, and he wants to go meet him on the 28th of June, and they're all like, dude, what are you even doing here? You know? <laughs> God, he's such a dumbass. So, you know, he's making fun of nature. Oh, then, then, oh, about nature. It's all zebras and cheetahs and lions and stuff. No, it's not. And he knows that. And of course, you know, they ask him the first question. He half denies it. And then two or three other people started asking him about it. And you can see he was getting visibly upset. He said, I already answered that question. And the lady's like, no, you didn't. Uh, can you please give us some clarification? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, I already answered that question. I already answered it. So, you can see, you know, ah, he wants to get out of there. He doesn't want to face this stuff. He knows he had to, just like the suspect, you know, from the, the waggling, uh, had to come into the station. But he wants to get out of there. Same as, you know, Ponta. And he's like, oh, man, the quicker I can get you know, out of here, the better. Because, you know, he's getting burned, getting burned up inside, getting a little comfortable. So, you know, saddest commentary I think I can say is that um, that was a very short press conference, maybe uh, f literally like five or six minutes. And, you know, it's fine, late at night, and, uh, you know, he doesn't have to stick around. I wouldn't stick around if I was guilty like he is. But today, uh, and I didn't buy the newspapers I was going to, but I completely forgot to just to show you the paper versions, but they're online. You can read them every minute. And of course, uh, they're at the bottom of the screen in English in several different ways. Um, yeah, newspaper one, oh, Ponte was uh, accused. Newspaper two, he, Ponte was accused, and here's the kind of the proof. Ponte, you know, number three, blah, 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 kind of, you know, everybody's covering it. Of course, he's the prime minister. He's like the president of the United States. Someone accuses the president, Obama, of you know, plagiarizing his, uh, you know, doctoral dissertation, it's kind of supposed to be news. And then, you, oh, this is what's so terrible. Okay, so they all got their own take on it. And, of course, the, the opinion people, chatter, 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 I got my opinion. I'm, well, I got my opinion, too. Great. But then you get to certain media, certain newspapers, and certain television stations. Or the newspapers, I mean, come on. No mention of it. It's like it never happened. And that's got to tell you something right there, because they're already known to be, I guess, his supporters. And, you know, I, I didn't expect a critical, scathing attack on his, you know, potential plagiarism. But it's still newsworthy, even if you want to deny it. Even if you want to say, Ponta denies a malicious slander against his wonderful self. Okay, but you still mention it. You still talk about it. You still, it's still news. But when you bury it, and you say, oh, like, oh, it never happened, no, blah, 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 I don't know what's going on. Oh, uh, mm -hmm, no, what, what story was that? Oh, that was nothing. No, no! So, that's like communist dictatorship crap. Like, oh, if we didn't print it, and we don't talk about it, then it didn't happen. Well, it did happen. And of course, everyone knows about it, because we don't live in a dictatorship, but... We're getting there, and you got to think, like, here's a guy who, you know, like, proved, already proved, or proved that, you know, he was showing all the signs of guilt and all the signs of being a little liar, and the media buddies that he has are all doing him the favor of not even bringing it up. That's crap. That really is it, head towards dictatorship. And, uh, you know, you know, who we got to protect us? We got some, another party who's basically just as corrupt, maybe slightly less corrupt, freaking Buck and his little crew, and, oh, they're going to protect us? No! You know, just they just happen to be on the other team. It's like two mafia guys fighting it out so the price of heroin doesn't go up. 
well, thanks for, you know, the price control, but I still don't want to be living in a neighborhood controlled by the mafia. And that's what Romania is. It's a country that's run by a mafia. It's not the Italian mafia. It's not the Russian mafia. It's just this little bands of little crooks getting their little degrees. Easy as pie. I'm a professor. I'm giving you a degree. So you can call yourself a doctor. Well, you know, Saddam Hussein used to have elections. Of course, he won every time, 99.9% .9 of the vote. All dictators do. The, the guy in North Korea does that. Stalin did that. Hitler did it. They all do that. They had this crazy need for, like, you know, I'm, I've always wondered, I know about that. Like, you know, Saddam, what are you doing? Why are you even running for president? Why are you even sham elections? What is the point of a sham election? I never understood. Mubarak, the president of Egypt, so he got his ass kicked in January last year. He used to do the same thing. He's been president for, I don't know, 30 years. Sham election. You know, I never understood why these people did it. Uh, they're in no danger of losing their job if they don't have an election. They already, the whole world knows they're a bunch of crooked-ass dictators. Ceausescu, same thing. You know, he got reelected by the party congress every four years or whatever. Why? Ceausescu got himself a bunch of degrees. You know, fake ones. Well, why? You know, I mean, what is the deal with that? I never understood that. Ones are falling right along, you know. Oh, I, got, I got a degree in international law, bitches. Who gave it to you, man? Oh, my buddy. Who, you know, he used to be the prime minister. Now I'm the prime minister. So, you know, what are the chances of that happening? <laughs> and I get caught red-handed. And what is... First of all, my media buddies don't even call it. Right? Uh, doesn't even exist as far as they're concerned. And if it was the communist dictatorship and he was the president or it doesn't even have to be communist, it could be fascist or anything else. Well, if he was, if this was fascism and he was doing this, guess what? It wouldn't exist at all. It'd be rumors on the internet, rumors on the internet. It's a dirty rumor. Because officially it never happened, right? What are Romanians doing about it? That's my question, you know? They know the proof. It's right there. I mean, I'll give them a couple of days. You know, if people want to look at the papers. I want to look at the papers. But if it's proven, black and white, word for word, that this guy stole his election, I'm really curious what Romanians are going to do about it. Because now you got a leader who's been proven to be a lawyer. No court trial necessary. No jurisprudence. No uh, expert testimony. No... Doctor, Your Honor, no, 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 it couldn't be simpler, you know, either he did or he didn't, and if he did, and over half of his dissertation, what in the world is he doing running the country? But anyway, folks, that's my show for today, I appreciate you uh, watching, and hopefully today the recording is